has good technique, he will be elite. If his technique becomes great, not just good, then he's a Hall of Famer. Fighting through contact, fighting through off the line, being a double team, multiple moves stacked into one, just a play of pure domination. This is actual film, this is actual football talk. It's a football show, it's about football, not storylines. And you are listening to another edition of Blue It Splits. Uh, Going to update that intro, uh, intro in the hopefully in the near future, but at least by the season. Um, we're going to have a new intro, some rookies, some things like that into there to be um, exciting. Uh, today we are doing uh, Jamie and Sherwood. Um, some of these reviews as they come in um, with the later guys, some of them will be shorter, some of them will be a little bit longer. Sherwood's going to be 21 plays. Um, I know Nazar Dean will be a little bit longer. Uh, Panak, you know, might be a little bit not not too short. Actually, I think I have a good amount of game, like good amount of games on him. But guys like Eccles, Jonathan Marshall, uh, Rashid, uh, some of those guys are going to be a little bit um, a little bit shorter. But uh, to to recap, we still I did Elijah Vera Tucker. I appreciate all the kind of words on that. There's actually some plays I missed um, in terms of him like bridging and pop stepping. Um, some things I miss. I think uh, there's a lot of plays and that's towards the end. I started to lose track a little bit, but I appreciate all the kind of words. We did Elijah Moore. We did Michael Carter. We did two parts of Zach Wilson, but we still have two parts of Zach Wilson to do. We still have Michael Carter, the second to do. Panak, uh, Ham, also, or, or Hamsa Nazar Ladin, also known as Ham, is coming up next. Uh, Brandon Eccles, Jonathan Marshall, uh, Yaboa, Rashid Jr., um, Isaiah Dunn, are all coming and that's just the draft class. And then after the draft class, we still have Rankins to do Keelan Cole to do Joyner, Vinnie Curry. Uh, and then I plan on doing, I have not recorded them yet. Um, but I plan on doing Tevin Coleman, uh, Croft and Feeney. Um, will some of those be accompanied, accompanied by articles? I'm not sure depending on how much time I have, but we have about three months plus some preseason tape to evaluate before the season. Um, with that being said, the other housekeeping, uh, I'm recording this on the 27th. I'm sure it'll be released on the 30th. Um, maybe the start to June. I'm not really too sure, depending on how the rest of my schedule is looking in terms of releasing ham, uh, or Hamsa. So with that being said, today was the first OTA practice or the first, uh, was it OTA mini camp, voluntary mini camp, whatever the hell they're, hell they're called? I forget some of the names. Apparently, Wilson looked pretty good, which is a positive. Um, make sure you follow Robbie Sabo at Robbie Sabo for updates. He is there um, for the closed um, practices, or at least you know when when any of the other guys are there, Samini Hughes, any of those guys are there. So Sabo is as well. So make sure to follow him, get live updates. And he did say that uh, Zach Wilson just looks different. He just looks better than Sam Darnold. Um, not trying to be. Uh, too reactionary to this practice of seven on sevens and 11s on 11s. But he said, you know, the footwork and the decision-making, it's all um, just, it stands out from watching Zach Wilson. So that's a positive. Um, other than that, we have a live stream coming on, what is it? June 7th, whatever the first Monday of June is. I think it's the sixth or the seventh um, with myself and Kyle Smith. So make sure to tune into that. We have a lot to talk about um, in that episode. Um, we'll be taking calls still. We're going to be talking about, you know, our favorite picks or least favorite picks from the draft class. You know, Zach Wilson's teams versus uh, um, Darnold's teams um, in terms of the support around them. We're going to talk about the, the Jets wide receiver group and where they stack up in the league, uh, their defensive line where it stacks up in the league. We're going to talk about, you know, a bunch of different things to make sure you tune in for that. Uh, towards the end of the review, I will give the strengths and weaknesses of uh, – Jamie and Sherwood, I'm not going to give that um, yet, but I did watch Georgia and Old Miss, I think were the two games I, I watched. There wasn't a ton available on him, but I got enough. Um, ideally, you want four, five, six games. Um, me personally, I watch every single game that I have because, you know, there could be a really good game or a really bad way that I could show you some traits I didn't really know about. Um, other than that, follow Michael underscore Nanya. He does all those crazy numbers. Follow me, JRB31. Uh, obviously, Robbie Sabo. Follow Jets X Factor. Follow our other writers. Um, and Andrew Golden, uh, Vitor, uh, I forget his P Pavilia, if I forget his last name is, and then you have uh, Zazzy Jets too, who they all take part in the Oklahoma Drill podcast. Uh, G off, we had a bunch of guys, so make sure to follow all the all the writers and contributors to uh, 
Jets X Factor. At this time, New York sports, uh, it's looking up. The Mets are still finding ways to win games, um, even though they have a shit ton of injuries. The Yankees are playing better than they did in the beginning of the season. I don't really keep up with the Yankees too much. Um, Islanders are – did they win their series yet or are they about – about the one, I think it was the last time they were like up 3-1 in their, in their series. Uh, I root for the Islanders. Um, I don't have any issues with the Islanders. Um, the Nets are up 2 nothing. By the time you listen to this, the Nets are probably either up 3 nothing or probably swept the Celtics. I don't see them losing a game to the Celtics. The Knicks just tied it up last night with the Hawks 1-1. Um, I don't root for the Knicks, to be completely honest. I, I kind of I want to because I, I like that they're kind of underdogs. They haven't won in a while. They're a team that plays hard, but... Uh, Knicks fans are a pain in the ass. A- anytime you bring up the Nets to Knicks fans, I'm a Nets fan. Um, it's oh, they don't even matter. Even though the Nets had more views than the Knicks this year per game, um, and I understand that's with the with the big three that they have. But Knicks fans, that's their only response to the Nets is that they uh, that they don't matter. So um, I know it's the Giants and the Jets. The Giants, uh, the Jets have more fans to relation to the Giants than the Nets do to the Knicks. Realistically, like die, die hard fans. But then, what? You, can you be a Mets fan? to the Yankees. Can you be a Jets fan to the Giants? Like it's, it's, it's a stupid thing that people say. So, um, I would root for the Knicks, but I'm sorry, you guys are a bunch of douches for the most part. So I root for the Knicks to lose. Um, even though New York sports, whatever. So I don't, I don't care if you hate me for saying that, but, uh, if, if your chin wasn't so high, maybe I would root for the Knicks. But, um, other than that, I can't really think of anything else that's going on in, in New York sports, uh, solos at the Knicks game. That was, that was cool to see. Um, getting, accustomed to the new york fans uh the knicks fans are loud that is, that is for sure um i don't know who spit on trey young but that's a damn shame uh that taken way too far so uh was that was that was that knicks fans yeah that was knicks fans right spit on trey young uh i'm pretty sure that was the knicks fans that's that's a disgrace um i i know one fan doesn't make up for whatever 10,000 20,000 people are there uh but that person should be ashamed of themselves going on uh, to Jamie and Sherwood. Uh, I am going to play the plays first. Um, for the most part, unless I forget, uh, some people have said that they want to see the plays first and be pointing them out. And then after that, um, we can break it down or I can break it down, but let's watch them. Um, here first uh, on this play again. I'm just going to let it play for the most part. A lot of these plays. Uh, the only thing to note before this, and I don't really, it's nothing really crazy, is the, the communication pre-snap. He definitely has a good command of the of the defensive system of the um, of where to direct guys. So you definitely like to see a lot of pre-snap communication. It seems like he gets guys directed, and he's one of the leaders of that defense. And that's something you want to see. Um, picking up the defense is a huge part of it. Picking up any scheme, offensive, you know, for offensive linemen, running backs, protection schemes, wide receivers, routes run, adjustments, side adjust, all that stuff. Quarterbacks, obviously, safeties. It's huge. Um, communication on all levels of the field. It, it really is. Um, so to see a guy who has a good command of his scheme is a positive. And a lot of the guys go to the next level and they have the physical capability, but the mental part is what they don't get. Um, and he seems to have good pre-snap awareness, uh, post-snap may be different in some cases for me. Um, but he's on the edge here, obviously a lot of, uh, pre-snap communication, which you definitely like to see, as I said, checking to make sure everybody, uh, has their assignments picked up. Um, you have Georgia who runs this, this outside zone, um, Sherwood wants to maintain his outside leverage here, obviously, because if the run is breaking to the outside, he wants to squeeze it back inside. So he maintains his outside leverage. So one thing I will say about taking on this block, his hands are wide and they come high. He gets caught in the chest NFL level. Does he, does he break or, or does he shed this block? Most likely not the pet, even if it's a bad offensive lineman, uh, they're going to be stronger. They're going to have better hand placement. His hands are high as well. His body's high leaning a little bit from the waist base looks like he's, he's driving off of the balls of his feet, not the insteps. So um, not the best uh, block kick out from this offensive lineman. So you do want to see uh, Sherwood have better hand placement. I do now, now with that being said in terms of the tech uh, technical wise about him taking on this block, you can see the power that he has taking on this block, even without bad hand or without good hand placement. I do like that. He drops his weight, but the hands I want to see a little bit better. Um, now again, holding up versus that block, being able to being able to absorb it without his hands, just his chest shows some of his strength working past the block, um, and then making the tackle. So some good, the good pre-snap communication, 
um, so making sure to have the outside leverage squeezing the run, forcing it back inside to where more pursuits coming. The bad is, um, again, the, the hand placement, but then a positive from that, as you see some of the strength that he, that he has, again, this one would be relatively short because it's only 21 plays, um, uh, long week this this has been a week from hell from for for your boy uh so if i get a little bit tripped up tripped all words i think i had like five six hours of sleep the other day between like 53 hours of being awake whatever it was um so trying to catch up but sherwood and then you have these people who fly from freaking california new jersey they say they have jet lag and it takes them weeks to adjust i think it's hilarious uh sherwood communication man rep pass deflection okay he's right here i'll play it in full speed again notice the pre-snap that's something i don't really have to you know, I'm letting it play out. You're seeing a lot of pre-snap right here, so you don't really see a lot of plays. But again, pre-snap. And again, in this situation, if he didn't point, I don't know if any, somebody else would have picked it up and 21 points out as well right here. But number 14 wasn't even on his man. There was a free guy in the slot right there. So um, good job, pre-snap. Um, pointing some guys out, and then we'll see a man coverage rep from him. Now, these are, again, these are some plays that you see go up on Twitter, and it's, oh, pass deflection for 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 Sherwood watching it, you know, multiple times, um, I, you know, the, the tight end drops it. So the things I do like about this, this coverage is I like the fact that he stays, that he stays square. Um, I don't necessarily like that is that he's a little bit too far outside. Now you do want to maintain outside leverage. Um, actually that's not even necessarily true. You don't, you don't really necessarily have to. Um, and to actually counter my initial point again, I'm running through it kind of with you guys. Um, if anything, he, there's not a lot of room to the sideline because he's on the boundary. I would like to see him stay more heads up here in off coverage, because if he is to break to the sideline, one, trust your athleticism, trust your length, which he does have 40 inch arms, which is fantastic. 40 inch arms, Jesus Christ, 34 inch arms, uh, 40 inch arms would be the longest I think ever, um, unless you're Yao Ming. Uh, so um, I would like to see him, you know, stay a little bit heads up right here. And if he does break to the outside, then, then use that sideline as that, as that second defender and, uh, you know, run him out, but not terrible. I would like to see him say heads up. That's, that's, that's my personal preference because he does give him some room inside again, not the sharpest break from the tight end. You can see that's not necessarily the, the, the best route as he stems him outside breaks inside. Um, and then, uh, I do like that he gets to the upfield shoulder. His eyes get into the backfield as he's closing the ground. Um, now, this ball, again, it's not, it's not deflected by, by Sherwood. In, unless, unless his upfield arm gets underneath, which when you, when you watch it frame by frame, it looks like it's, it's at the elbow. If he, if, he, if he rakes that elbow, sure. Are you giving him the benefit of the doubt on that? Yes, did this, did this uh, inside arm come and, and, and deflect that ball away? No, it's not. So, but these are plays, again, you watch on Twitter. Oh, look at, look at him play the upfield shoulder, gets the pass deflection. Uh, no. You know, again, unless he's controlling that rake in that elbow, the upfield elbow of, of the tight end, I don't, I don't see that. The tight end just drops it. And again, you have to look at translatable things. Like, is this a good route run by the tight end? Ask yourself that question. Is that, is, is, is that wrap snapped off at the top? Is, is he the most overly athletic guy? No, it's pretty rounded. So if, if he's going to get beat on that, which did he get beat badly? No, but again, translatable. If this is, if this is, you know, Gusecki, uh, Kyle Pitts of this year, um, you know, Johnu Smith, Hunter Henry, are they going to run a better route than this? Yes. And that's how you have to watch, that's how you have to watch these things. Um, so I would seem a little bit heads up, not the worst play, not the best play. Um, in my opinion, I just want to go over a lot of the plays I see on Twitter. I want to see a lot of the plays. I want to go over a lot of the plays uh, of these two games. Honestly, you gotta you gotta kind of reach sometimes um, for this uh, when you only have two games to make a full review. Um, Sherwood not a burner. Okay, uh, he's right here, circling with my mouse. Um, he's at the linebacker level. Um, he was a guy who, like, typically on first down would be used um, as a deeper safety second, third down, he, he typically drop into the box. So he's definitely a box type player. He played almost much in the box has linebackers. He did as a safety. So I know he was listed as, listed as safety, but he played just as many linebacker reps. Um, at least to my eye, um, not even have the numbers where somebody might, you know, comment on this say, Oh no, he's 57% safety and 43% uh, box. Get the hell out of here. So I'm about to say it's, it's about the same. Uh, share without a burner watch from this play again. We'll break it down. Um, after the fact. So 
this is just to show this the, the the speed or somewhat the lack of speed that he has. Um, they drop into uh, like a like a quarter quarter half, and he is the um, hook zone, and he's gonna read uh, three to two. I don't, I don't know if they're. It looks like they're spot dropping more than they're actually than, than they're actually pattern matching here because if they're pattern matching. He'd probably choke up a little bit to the two to like the two to one. Um, but he's gonna he's gonna match the three. Anything that threatens his zone, he's going to he's gonna take it. Um, and I don't think he. I, you could you could argue that you'd want to see more of a clean hip transition right there, like he, like his feet a little here. Like at this point, once he starts getting vertical, maybe you'd like to see him commit vertical a little bit sooner. Um, that's super nitpicky if it's even true at all. Um, but I do want to show the he doesn't have the best speed and you can, and you can see that here, like his acceleration right here, you know, did he match it? No, let's be honest again, translatable. And let's say if, if, you know, if, uh, if these two guys were to run, you know, whatever, whatever vertical routes enough to, to eat up this, the, these, these two quarters. Um, and he attacked the seam, let's say the, the cover two part of this, he was to drive down on, on a vertical route from, or an out route, whatever it may be, from the boundary one, and share what is left on an island with this guy. Did he match this versus a good ball? No, in my opinion, no. Um, again, now if this is not number eighty-six from Georgia, whoever it is, and this is Johnu Smith, Hunter Henry, is this? Is there even more separation? In my opinion, again, translatable things. Yes. So, and and the ball is there. Honestly, if the if the ball was not overthrown here, this is a completion. So. Good play? No, not in my, not in my opinion. Um, now, does he know his assignment? Um, yes, but again, in terms of his acceleration and speed, I, I don't see it as much as some other people do. Do I think he's as 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 athletic as the, you know, the the guys who have been under Sala and uh, and and Brick? Who I'm just going to refer to Brick as the DC. Um, that's his nickname. So you know, the Deion Jones, the Quan Alexanders, you know, of the, of the linebacking world, who they coached the, the, uh, Ocalon, whatever the hell that guy's name is from the Falcons. Is he as athletic as those guys in terms of top end speed, um, hip mobility, flexibility? I don't think so. I don't, I don't see that now. Can they work on that? Maybe, but I, I don't think so to be, to be completely honest. Um, he's right here. I'm gonna circle my mouse again. obviously a good play right um you watch it again so in my mind um he's most likely playing the flat right here i don't think his his blitz was designed off of the edge right here so i don't think it's a blitz um i think this is a situation of pre-snap um film study knowing that this set from georgia most likely um is going to constitute a a bubble screen from uh number what is it 18 right there um and he, him also knowing his defense, obviously now, you know, smart players, at least and I'm, I'm, I think he's a relatively smart guy pre-snap knowing that he had to play deep right here. If, if, if he were to have a deep zone, would he shoot this? No, you ha you have to say patient. You'd, ha you'd have to force a run back inside. You'd have to hope that the backside pursuit's going to make the tackle. You can't take that risk. Um, now when the ball is thrown, it's a different story, but pre-snap again, I think it's I think it's him knowing that he's a guy deep behind him, and I think it's him knowing this set from Georgia that it's most likely going to be a a uh, a screen right here. Now again, sees uh, the wide receiver coming to block him, which again is another tip off um, to that hand placement. Again, not the best, correct? You know, hands are wide; they both come wider here. You don't want to get caught in the chest by anybody. You don't want to get splashed by anybody. Um, again, especially versus receivers in the NFL. Now, again, translatable stuff. We're gonna, I'm going to start to mention that more because I think people watch college film and what they do is they, they tend to just look at the result instead of the process. The process here is he got caught in the chest. NFL, Jarvis Landry, whoever this may be, good blocking re, uh, you know, receivers or even guys with better technique. Um, are they going to, to block him? Obviously, feet stall right here. He doesn't run through it, et cetera. Um, you don't give him a positive on that block shutting. Now, you give a positive on some of the strength to get by it. You know, the, the fact that he hops outside – in step, um, widens and sheds it. Yeah, that's a that's a positive. But the initial part of it, um, 
is not good. So like his blo- his block shedding to me is an issue. Initial contact, uh, post contact, his strength definitely shows up. So there's good and bad with his block shedding. Now again, shoots that gap between the receivers, block sheds, finds the finds the the receiver, um, and and dives to make the tackle um, for loss on on that play. Again, I'll play in full speed. Watch it. Some good, some bad. Um, overall good because of the pre-snap, post-snap, just knowing where his defenders are, um, knowing what that set typically brings. I'm going to guess is that that's what happened there. Uh, now, again, the technical ac- aspect of initially taking that block, you want to see the hand placement improve. Um, goal line, the, you're going to see a pass deflection right here from Sherwood. He's manned up um, on the number two right here, um, which is either a bigger receiver or a tight end. I don't know George was full. Eh, I'm going to say it's a receiver. Um, Okay, so pass deflection. Um, so there's a few things. Again, you have you had just straight man, and he's playing he's playing uh, inside as like a hold defender, you know, cover one, whatever you want to call it. He's just obviously is shorter because it's a condensed area of the field. There are some arguments, and it depends on kind of what your set is. And now I'm not sure if he if this. Hmm. Now, based on how everybody else is lined up, all these guys have inside leverage or making themselves break out. His eyes, this this linebacker safety, his eyes are to the boundary. So were these guys supposed to, you know, coach to play outside or, or into outside and these guys supposed to play um, outside in and force these guys inside? I'm not too sure. Um, now, there are certain moments on the – on the uh, – Goal line where you want guys to cut outside because it's a it's a harder throw, um, but then there's also times where if you have inside help that you want them to cut inside. It's all dependent on 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 the play. Um, here, he he breaks on the route. Um, now in the NFL, again better throw. Does he does he make that pass deflection if this is floated outside? Maybe not. Now was the quarterback in a situation where he needed to put a little bit of juice on that ball and put it a little bit lower because of this of this corner, maybe him potentially breaking off. Yes. Um, so good in terms of arm length. He just gets a hand on that ball. He definitely does get a hand on the ball. Um, the 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 break. Now is he leaning to this break? Yes. You could you could. It's a it's a speed cut. Is it the is it the most? Does it have the most pace on it? Not not necessarily. Um, you could see him anticipate the break before, before it comes. So that's good. Um, you'd like the length, definitely an aggressive angle for sure, but he was a little bit far off where he had to play it aggressive. Maybe if you try to play it more conservative, it's a good ball. He probably doesn't make that play. So it's, it's kind of all or nothing type of play. Um, you could argue that you'd like to see him a little bit more heads up on that, on that route as he starts stemming to the outside because his stem is not ver- completely vertical. It is outside. You could argue that you want to see him shuffle um, and stay over top of the route um, to make this not as hard of a break. Again, it's just a fingertip um, that he gets in that ball. So good. Some things to clean up me a little bit in terms of him staying over top of that of that route as it stems outside, um, especially if the defense was designed for that safety to um, look to, to Sherwood's side initially. Uh, communication, Sherwood right here. Again, thump. Uh, we'll play it, and then we'll watch, and then we'll discuss – The only thing I'm really showing here is 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 the thump again pre snap pointing guys you know directing whatever it may be um, even if these guys know their roles um, communication is ever a bad thing pre snap obviously. So.